I'm trying to figure out where all these Apple products came from when I used to hate Apple as a kid. Like, why do I have all these Apple products? So what I wanna talk about today is Apple Silicon, Silicon, whatever you wanna call it, I'm calling it Apple Silicon. Um, usually after my run is when my thoughts are most clear and I was thinking about Apple Silicon the entire time and I have my final thoughts on Apple products and ARM chips and the computing industry in general. Because like I said previously before in my Big Sur video, I think that not only is this a major change for Apple, this might be a major change for the computer industry as well because whenever Apple decides to do something, it seems everyone else wants to follow suit. And I think this is a turning point in computing industry in general. And I could be biting my words. We're gonna have to see in a couple of year, in a couple of years of where we're gonna be. But I want to show you guys a clip of what Tim said for the presentation of WWDC. At Apple, integrating hardware and software is fundamental to everything we do. That's what makes our products so great. And silicon is at the heart of our hardware. So this fusion of hardware that Tim is talking about, I think is what is going to define ecosystems that has been coined over the years moving forward. Because this whole ecosystem thing was kind of just a software thing that people saw. But I think moving forward, the ecosystem is going to be a hardware and software thing. You can even see this to this day because the processors that Apple has been building inside their iPhone since 2010 is what makes the iOS experience seem so fluid and fast, even in modern day times. Like this iPhone 10 has, I think like two or three gigabytes of RAM, and it's still able to go toe to toe with Android phones that have the Snapdragon 855, the 865 with eight, 12, 16 gigabytes of RAM. But it's just that software optimization that Apple is able to extract extract because they built the chipset inside of it. So one of my most popular videos at the time of me recording this is my overheating video for the MacBook Air. I'm surprised it caught so much fire, pun intended, because a lot of people were upset that Apple didn't put a fan to the heatsink. And I agree it is a bad design choice, but to be more specific, I think it's a bad design choice for Intel-based products because if you look back a couple years ago, five years ago, when Apple released the MacBook just by itself, it was a really thin and light design. And I think that was the vision that Apple had going forward with computers, but I think Intel's chips were just not capable of running lower and still netting you high performance that people wanted. And that's ultimately why that MacBook that lasts, I think from 2015 to 2017 or 18, died off because Intel processors are just not in line with what Apple has envisioned for the future of computing. And I think in terms of a design choice, their Apple Silicon chips are probably working pretty well with that new design choice in the MacBook Air. So believe it or not, Apple has been making custom chips for a decade now, starting with the iPhone 4. So the iPhone 4 was using a A4 chip that was in the iPad Pro as well. And then in 2014, they started making the S series for the Apple Watch. Then in 2016, they released two chips, the T1 chip, which is used for Touch ID and security benefits inside MacBooks. And then the W1 chip, which was in the original AirPod, but it's now on Apple Watches for better connectivity, power efficiency. We have the H1 chip, which is used for their Pro Audio um, lineup, so their AirPod Pros and their Powerbeats Pro. And then you have the U1 chip and that's inside the iPhone 11, which is their spatial awareness, their ultra wideband um, chip. And it's just, <sighs> Apple has been refining and perfecting their chips for over a decade. And I think now is just the final nail in the coffin for what they want to do for all their Mac products. Because if you look at this table, all these products are pretty much all Apple except for the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air, and just their Mac products in general. They're all running Intel. And if you replace the Intel chip inside all their Mac products, you have a full <laughs> you have a full Apple ecosystem and I'll get into that later in the video when I think at the word ecosystem now. So here's an example, right? 
this iPad Pro, I thought this would be a dumb tablet, if I'm gonna be honest. Um, I was like, why do I care about a tablet with a LiDAR scanner? And why do, I, why do I care about a tablet at all in 2020? And then I started using it and not gonna lie, two weeks, two and a half weeks, I was recording and editing videos on this iPad Pro, 4K full resolution with multiple layers, full playback quality, no hiccups, no stuttering. When I came to rendering, it was essentially real time. And I was just blown away that a device like this was able to provide me with such performance in the thin and light chassis, no fan, quiet and cool to the touch. I was just amazed by the iPad Pro. So one thing that came into mind when I was running was brand loyalty, and it might not seem too obvious, but I'm going to explain it. So when it comes to brand loyalty, there is no other brand, okay, maybe excluding fashion brands, but in terms of the tech space, Apple products, I would say, might have the most loyal fans out of anyone. Clearly, you can see on this table. And here's the example I wanna give you guys, right? So, let's say there are two MacBooks on this table. They're both identical. The only difference between the two is Apple has their silicon chips inside and then Intel chip in the other. Now, as an Apple loyal customer, which one would you go for? Now me personally, I'm going to be a little bit conservative on what I say, and I'm gonna say that eight out of 10 of those people are probably gonna get the Apple Silicon chips, and then the other two people are probably gonna get um, the Intel-based chip just because like stability and they just you know trust Intel and whatnot. And that brand loyalty, I think, is what is going to draw people to that um, Apple Silicon-based MacBook when it does come out in the future. And it's for example, like another example is, let's say there's an iPhone with the A13 Bionic chip, and then they release another iPhone, same exact thing, side by side with a Snapdragon 845, more RAM, et cetera, et cetera. Which one are you gonna pick? If I'm gonna be honest, I would probably go for the A13 Bionic chip just because Apple has control. Apple's the one that made that chip. They didn't make the Snapdragon. They know everything that's inside the chip, how everything communicates with one another. And I think most people would probably still go for that A13 Bionic chip, even though you are getting more RAM and whatnot. So that's what I mean by brand loyalty that Apple is trying to get customers in for not only the software experience, but also the hardware behind it. Let me know down in the comments below if you would pick up a um, Apple Silicon MacBook or an Intel based MacBook. So now I wanna talk about the people who think they are in trouble because they bought an Intel MacBook, and I wanna say that you're you're fine. I wanna say that you guys have at least a minimum 10 years of software support, probably even more, and I don't think, like I said, I don't think Apple's gonna cannibalize their Intel laptop user base. People that I do worry about, and I'm part of this group, unfortunately, are the early adopters, because I'm not a fan of adopting new technology that hasn't been proven yet with a track history, but, I think Apple out of all companies in the world are going to do it the best because they've probably been doing testing, I don't know, years ago, maybe months ago, years might be a stretch, but months with testing these ARM-based products and they probably have discovered that this is something we can do. We can officially break off of Intel and make our own desktop grade processors and have the entire iOS, macOS ecosystem just finally be one unified OS altogether. So next up, I wanna talk about price, and this is where it gets interesting. So Apple products. I used to hate Apple products, if I'm gonna be honest, when the first iPhone came out. I was honestly just jealous of every kid playing Tap Tap Revenge and being able to watch YouTube as well on their phones while I'm having a flip phone. But um, I thought Apple products were just ridiculously overpriced and they were just not worth it. And I think with these Apple-based MacBooks specifically, their iPhones are not gonna change. I think their laptop prices are gonna come down, even the Mac Mini, maybe the Mac iMac and the iMac Pro. I think those prices are gonna come down over time with the Apple Silicon chips because there is a price you have to pay for working with Intel. And I think if Apple, Apple has the choice, right? They have the choice to still sell it at the same price or sell it cheaper. And this is where I was thinking about this on my run as well. 
So Amazon does this as well to get more market share. And what I think Apple might do, and it's probably just gonna be more cost effective for them. Let's say Apple still sells their MacBook with Intel processors inside, and they sell their Apple Silicon based MacBooks inside. That was the opposite, that's weird. But um, they sell them side by side, but the Apple Silicon ones are $200 cheaper. Now here's the thing you want to note. Even though they might be taking a loss and selling these laptops at a cheaper price, the whole point of getting into the Apple ecosystem is to buy other products, right? If the person buys the MacBook and they discover that they really like it, they might buy the Apple Watch, which is gonna be worth $300. That $200 price delta isn't gonna matter anymore. The person might wanna buy an iPhone, which, $1,000, it's $700 difference or gain that they're getting in profit. It's that customer retention that, no, 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 it's called customer acquisition, that's what it's called. The customer acquisition to take that price cut for lowering the price of their MacBooks, I think is going to be well worth it. And I think maybe over time, they might adjust the prices back up because you know Apple likes their profits, their business. Um, but I think in terms of what Apple is going to do from a business perspective, help them out in the long run. On top of that as well, if they do sell it at a cheaper price and more people flock to those Apple Silicon based chips, that means you have more users using that processor and that architecture. And that's going to be able for your developers to know um, potential bugs, glitches, um, errors that might arise on certain applications because in order for this transition to go well, you need a lot of data, right, from your users and their experiences on what they don't like, what they do like, what's going to be beneficial for them, what they're looking for. And if you have a whole bunch of people using your system, it's going to make that, it's going to make discovering those problems a lot easier along the way. So please, Apple, I'm begging you, you have the choice. Make your MacBooks cheaper, even if it's $100. Even if it's $100, something, right? So here's what I'm gonna end with, the ecosystem, right? This ecosystem, this word that has been coined over the years. I think the ecosystem is no longer a software thing. It's going to become a hardware and software thing, where the ecosystem relies on not only the software, but also the hardware to communicate with each other to make an entire experience together. And looking at this now, the only other company that can rival Apple down the road if other companies don't start to follow suit, if this doesn't fail, is Microsoft. Because Microsoft made their Neo products last year with their ARM-based ch chips. Um, I might be wrong, correct me if I am, but this whole ecosystem thing is going to be integral with all those different chips that I listed before. H1 chip, W chip, S chip, all these processors Apple is making is to enhance the ecosystem and the user experience as well. Like for example, in the um, WWDC conference when they were talking about how your AirPods are able to dynamically switch between what device you're using. That's something that you can only get using Apple-based products. And I think that is what is defining this word ecosystem now. And I think we are going to see something in two years, a very big shift on what we think the ecosystem, the word is going to mean. It's not just going to be a software thing. Some people might look at this MacBook and say, this thing is already thin. Why do they need to make it thinner? But you know, an Apple engineer might pick this up and be like, I can make this thinner and more powerful, not using an Intel chip, but with an Apple Silicon chip. And I think that's the way Apple look at things. Um, you guys can let me know if you guys agree or disagree with anything that I've said. But like I said, I do think Apple's vision for computing in general is different than what everyone else is doing because they want to build a real ecosystem. And um, like I said, let me know down in the comments below if you agree or disagree. Um, leave a like if you did enjoy the video. Subscribe if you wanna see more content. And as always guys, before I say my phrase, right, I want to give my commemoration, is that the right word? I want to give my thanks or my appreciation to all the developers and the engineers who designed everything on this table to make the ecosystem what it is today. 
Um, like I said, I used to be an anti-Apple fan. I hated Apple products, but when I got the iPhone 5, I thought iOS was still pretty trash, but then I got a MacBook alongside that, and then I realized the ecosystem. And then I got my AirPods, and then the ecosystem got enhanced again. Then somehow the Apple TV landed in my apartment, and then my, uh, what's it called? Ecosystem experience enhanced again. Then I got an Apple Watch, iPad, and everything just seems to improve from what it was before. Like standalone, these devices are good, but once you add a companion to them that's also an Apple product, you realize how good of a value these phones are. Not phones, but products are. So I wanna give much love to all the engineers and developers who made all this possible um, in my lifetime specifically. It's really cool to see the vision Apple has. And hopefully within two years we see your ecosystem come into fruition because I do think it's pretty cool. Um, but as always guys, to everyone watching, much love.